What's going on YouTube? So today we're back in the shop. Um, be getting the truck ready again for this weekend, going out to the track. Um, got a few races. I got buddy Jake who's bringing out his nitrous Trans Am that wants to run me on Friday. And then I got my normal bracket race on Sunday. And I might also even make it to a bracket race at Jackson Saturday. We'll see. Uh, so last week I took Trans out, dropped it off to my buddy here, Micah in Orangeburg. He owns Palmetto Transmission great guy does great work I had him install the transgo shift kit into this thing for me so he knocked that out got the trans back to me today um, and I'm finally broke down and I'm going to be slapping the stall converter in. now I'm also going to be converting in the front to the true cool trans cooler in the front and bypassing the radiator cooler completely so I will be making new lines and everything for that and I'm going to show you how you make those also so you had to switch the fittings out to adapt this to AN lines instead of push clip horseshoe style because first off I don't like those every time I take them loose horseshoe goes flying across the room somewhere and you never find them again so we'll be going to AN lines for that and I'm going to show you how to make those lines so I'm going to go ahead and get started on this and uh, just take you along with me for the ride uh, any parts and stuff I use in this video, I will be linking down in the description. So if you're needing to do any of this, like the fittings and stuff to adapt this and stuff like that, or the lines I use uh, will be down below and you can pick them up yourself if you're wanting to do any of this to your truck or really any vehicle. So I'm going to go ahead and get started on this and just tag along. And uh, if you have any questions or anything, you can just comment them down below and I can answer them for you. So start off, I'm going to start these fittings in here um, early the early model transmissions don't have this extended neck on it so uh, what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to get the ones for the early model um, I'll link both the early model 4L ladies uh, I think they came in the like the square body Chevrolets but they don't have this extended neck so I'll link those in the description if you have the early 4L lady these are for the late 4L lady. If you do not have this extended neck, you're going to run into issues. Okay. So I believe that feed, I'm not a trans guy really. I, I hadn't gone through and re, uh, looked at the stuff as far as the internals, but I believe this feeds one of the drums in the back of the transmission. So it needs this extended neck to go and feed that. So I already got the O-rings on them. They're ready to go. So, I'm gonna end up slapping them in here real quick. Sorry. Sorry, make sure you put the right one in the right hole. I know I have issues with that sometimes. So, the one with the long neck goes into the back. Alright, so those are in. Alright, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and make the at least these end of the lines or whatever and let them hang down from the truck so that way when I get the trans in, I ain't trying to fight between the cab of the truck and getting these put on. So I'm gonna go ahead, get that end of them together, hook it up to the trans, and I'll just let them hang uh, for when I have the transmission in. And then later on, I'll hook up the cooler in the front. So I'm gonna go ahead and get set up for making the lines, move over there to buy the vise, and I'll set y'all back up and let y'all watch the process I do on those. Okay, so I got the lines here. What you gonna do? You gonna take it, go around between the inner liner and the braid. You gonna peel it back about an eighth of an inch. And then the uh, Evil Energy just sends this little tool in their kit, basically what it's for. You can go down in there, just open the hose back up just so whenever you try to slide the fitting together, it'll go in there. So also before you uh, peel it back, 
just make sure you go ahead and slide this end of the fitting on. When you see, peel it back just a little bit, open it up. Then your fitting here comes with this little collar. So you're gonna take that out, put it on the tube. What I'll do is I take it and I push the tube all the way down. It's a little bit off. So basically you just want to seat it all the way to the rim in there. Alright. Then you take the fitting here. You're going to take the nipple. Push it on down in there till it seats. Then you're gonna pull this up. And start threading it. Let me see if I can find a wrench here real quick that fits it. Now they do make soft jaws for these vices or whatever if you're really worried about scratching up your fittings you can put a soft jaw on there and that would stop you from scratching these up they also make an AN wrench for it too or whatever but normally the wrench I don't have an issue with it scarring it Now wait till it gets pretty tight and just give it a couple bumps and I call that good. You don't want to go, uh, I'm going to go a little more just to line up the flats for the fitting. You don't want to go too tight because you'll end up stripping it out. It is aluminum so. But that's the finished result. Like I said, the vise kind of nicked it a little bit but it'll be fine. So, and these are the swivel heads, so that way you can rotate it in any position you need once it's on the transmission. So, that's the first one made. I'm gonna go ahead and make up the second one, and then I'll just leave them hanging from the transmission. All right, so we're back over at the transmission. What I'm gonna do, just, sorry, I'm kind of blocking you here, ain't I? I'm gonna just go on ahead and screw these on here. Alright, so next for this truck, I had this converter built by ACC Atlantic Coast Converters in uh, Conway, South Carolina. I highly recommend them, pretty good people. Uh, the lady who works at the front desk is about the nicest woman I've ever met. 
I mean, I ain't never met somebody as, as friendly as her. It's kind of scary. But, uh, yeah, good bunch of people or whatever. Friendly, whatever. You tell them what you look for, what you need. Some specs on the truck and they build you one. This is the second one I had done. They actually did the restall on the stock one for me. Uh, but, finally decided to break down and spend the money on a converter. This is a 9.5 inch versus 13.5 inch stock one I had in there. So, now I cut down on the rotating weight a little bit and help out there. And also it was going to be a 4,000 stall versus the 3,000 I had in there. So we'll get this slapped in and be ready to go from there. She's all the way in. All right, I'm going to go ahead and get set up for. All right, I'm going to go ahead and get set up for getting this in the truck. So I'm going to set you back, probably put it on a time lapse of uh, me getting up and getting put in the truck. And then once I go to start the rest of the stuff up, I'll walk you through uh, hooking the trans cooler lines up and finishing that side up. So go ahead and get you set up for that. and. All right, so I got the transmission mounted up to the motor and uh, the converter hooked up. 
So I've got all my wires hooked up and everything. Um, had to fight with that dipstick tube. I think the hardest part of the job was getting the dang dipstick tube in position. Uh, but other than that, everything went pretty smooth. Uh, had a little challenge just tightening the torque converter bolts just because it's just me and uh, trying to hold the front of the crank and tighten the converter bolts at the same time. Um, also, I don't know if you noticed, I pulled the lines back loose from the transmission I made earlier. The only thing I did was uh, just because the trans tunnel was kind of tight to the transmission, instead of using the 45 degree angles, I switched those out to the 90 degree angles and that solved that issue. Uh, what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna go ahead and try to get the exhaust back up underneath the truck, get the cross member underneath and the drive shaft in and the trans stuff will be done. And then I'll start working on the cooler in the front of the truck. So I'm gonna go ahead and knock that stuff out. And then uh, I'm gonna get back with you when I start on the cooler stuff and finishing that up. Okay, so I got everything squared away underneath. I got the transmission all hooked up, all the electronics. Um, I got my lines connected underneath there. Um, I ran them out basically where the stock car lines ran. I ran them the same route and brought them up here to the front. They're just hanging down there. So next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go pull this front grill and everything out to get to where I'm gonna be mounting that trans cooler. And then I'm gonna show you how I'm mounting that and hook up the lines and pretty much put all that together. So I'm gonna go ahead and start working on pulling this apart and I'll get back with you after I get it all down and get ready to put that trans cool on. Okay, so this is what I got here. Um, basically, I got this cross rail going across from the factory. If you look, those bottom tabs actually line right up with some pre-existing holes already there. So what I might do is take those tabs and bend them so they're flat straight across. Then I can run some bolts down behind it, straight down into it, and then that, there's a piece in that kit for this. It comes with uh, the the crossbar that goes on these brackets. And what I can do is I can just bolt it straight to that cross arm. So I think that's how I'm end up doing it. Looks like it'll just squeeze in there underneath the latch and be perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these things and bend them up, try and get them on there right, and. I'll show you back when I have it set in position like it's going to be mounted. Alright, so what I got going on, I got it figured out. I did a little bit different than I said I was going to do. Um, 
This cross rail at the bottom, I did reuse it. I didn't bend the tabs on the cooler though because it looked like it was going to be kind of hard to do, especially with it not messing up this aluminum cooler. So I reused the crossbar. And what I did is I just flipped it. I flipped it 180 that way to bring it the opposite way and bring that flat side towards the front. Then I just drilled me some holes in that flat side. I had to trim the section here. I trimmed a little bit too much. So I only needed to trim a little bit to just clearance it away from this because it would have been hitting. I had to do that on both sides. And I used a nut just to space it out because there's a bolt right there that goes for the power steering cooler. So I just spaced it out with a nut there just to bring it out a little bit away from that. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the top figured out, get back with you, I'll show you the top. And then hopefully by the end, I'll be ready to start sticking some lines on there. Okay, so I've got it all mounted up now. Uh, basically what I did, I didn't really have to do much any drilling. I had to open these holes up a little bit, the inner ones, just to get the bolt through there. But you can probably use a little bit smaller bolt and do the same. Uh, I used the left hood latch bolt and then there was a bolt hole already here threaded I'm not sure what actually ever went there but it was a empty bolt hole so I just got me a 10 millimeter I had around the shop stuck in there and it lined up perfect with the brackets that you get to use the inner hole here so I opened that one up a little bit to get a little bolt through there and that secures it at the top like I say I got the little nut and stuff here as a spacer to get that one to work and it also gives me pretty good bit of room as far as getting my fittings and they'll run down just in front of the core support there so i won't have to worry about clearance with the core support with my lines so the only thing that's kind of close is right there but it actually has space between it and it actually should never hit so that's what i use the nuts for to space it out is get it away from that bolt worked out perfect she's nice and tight i mean i'm really yanking on her to move her and it's actually the whole about the whole core support moving because i need to tighten this bolt down here because that's loose for some reason that is stripped out so i'm going to start working on the lines now and then i'll get back with you and show you the lines once they're hooked up okay so i didn't point this out earlier uh to convert the cooler to a 6AN line. It is because it's actually an inverted flare that's in the cooler these comes with. You'll have to get these fittings here. I, again, I'll link this stuff down in the description for all these parts uh, and just throw it in each side and then that'll let you run a 6AN line on each one. Okay, so I got the lines made up and hooked right there. They got plenty of clearance and access to all the bolts holding this on is easily accessed. So if I ever need to take this off, it's easy to get off. Uh, nothing's kind of really in the way of anything. Like I said, lines are easy to get to or whatever. So if I need to take them loose later on, I ain't fighting to get them off. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much going to wrap up getting this mounted. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start topping the truck, truck off with some trans fluid and go ahead and try and get her fired up and just make sure there ain't no leaks or anything like that and make sure she's good to go. And then I'll probably end up tomorrow uh go out and do a little testing on the converter see how it does with the 4000 stall and i'll be getting video of that and stuff and i'll be doing a kind of a comparison test between what my converter was doing uh that 3000 stock converter was doing uh compared to this one and um i'll probably turn that into a whole another video of just the difference between the 4000 and the 3000 so stay tuned for that i'll be going out just like i did with the tires and testing uh 60 foot and stuff and i'll compare it to actually that tire video i'll just compare it against that uh because that was what did 3000 stall so stay tuned for that i'll get that out to you uh